good to see everyone again. I went to our local library, found the most magnificent book. It was vintage drawings and it was childlike. They were all kids and I thought, oh, this looks like a dream. And I thought, boom, boom, child, collage, dream. Let's make a collage that's like a beautiful child's dream. Come with me, let's find out how. I promised you another fun collage and I talked about the book that I used. I actually found it at the library. They have a place where we can buy books and it's Children in Their World, a treasury of vintage cutouts and illustrations and it was amazing. If I thumb through it, you can see I really cut it up pretty good, but look at these pictures. Amazing. I'm going to put it off to the side and you can see there's a variety. I went through and I picked out things because I did have a theme, the dream, a child's dream. What would, what would it look like? I have many, many pieces I cut out that I did not use that I still may use. So the core of a good collage is to have a balance of the background, which is the negative space, and the positive space. These I've started, I glued all of these down a little bit so that I could start out with you to show you my way of finding the best ways. These are all loose and I'm not going to do a lot of cutting because everyone knows how to cut. I like this here but I'm not sure yet because I have all of this to work with. Let's start with putting this tree down in the corner. Now remember you're going to just put a little dab of glue in case you want to tuck things under. So I'll put this here and since I have a little ridge up on the top or a little bit of a frame, I'm not going to put it right on the end. Let's see. Oh, how about this castle? Ooh, that fits in there perfectly. Sometimes things fit perfectly, but this was my main goal. This is actually just a little person in bed. And I thought, let's put that centered on the bottom because that's our theme. Let's see what next. We'll put this little elf over here. Now this, what child doesn't want to go on a pirate ship looking for treasure? Hmm. I lose the stars, so maybe I need to move this here, this here, and then I have, whoops, I have my pirate ship. Perfect. Now that I like this, oh, I still have too much space, so we got to move him over a little bit and maybe move this up. Before I lose this, I'm going to lift up a corner, put a little dab of glue, press it down. This can actually go over. See how much I'm putting? Just a dab. And that gives you a little let, wiggle room, so to speak, to turn them around. We're going to go back and glue all these down. Now, my exciting waves. Look at those. And since it's a dream, I tried to find pieces with a black background. You saw me put more glue on this, and it's because it's a bigger piece. Let's move that up a little bit so we can... I want that negative space there. We'll get our pirate sailing ship on. Now this has to look like it's part of it, so I need to line it up with the waves the best that I can. All right, so far so good. Now I did not put my little fairy here. The book was filled with amazing things. It gave me the idea for the dream, tuck it. I think I'm gonna tuck it a little bit under these clouds. And if you notice, these clouds have sheep. What better for a night scene? Here we go, this is why we don't glue them down all the way. Tip it. Let's do that so she doesn't have that flower on her head. There's a lot of dark in here, and I want to put something lighter in. Hmm. Now, what is an evening without a full moon? Um, how about right there? And that goes with the circular motion. You want balance. You want the, the movement of things. This was one of my favorite pieces. It's a little boy riding a kite. How much fun is that? Let's put him up in the clouds. I don't want to lose him, so I think I'm going to move him over as far as I can. So far, it's balancing out really well. Definitely need a star. Since we have all this negative space, I'm going to aim for right. Let's go. 
And the direction of the star makes a difference too. Let's do it this way because then it's kind of bursting in the sky. All right, time to do a little bit of cutting. I like this little fella. I think he'd be cute looking down on a sleeping child, but there's too much white in there. So I'm gonna take my little scissors and I'm gonna go in and cut some of that white out so that the blue shows through. But I wanna keep this swirl. It's got a little magical touch to it. Go around. Let's see. All right, now it looks like a hook, so I still need to cut some off. You'll be doing this as you do your collages, changing. So what I'll do is go a little closer to his hat and get rid of some of that too. And let's go down below and continue our line. And you will see why I'm not doing all my cutting in front of you. It's very time consuming. You have to take your time. Let's see. Yes, now he fits. I wanna move this up so I can do that because the glue is not well, not completely dry. I guess that's where it's going. So let's get a little bit of glue on our little elf here. I like it because it's all kind of fairy tale-ish. Oh, pick it up with my finger. Sort of looks like a monkey now, but that would be fun too. Now lift the bed up, put him down there so that he's kind of watching over the sleeping child. Since I know this is going to go here, I am going to put my glue down underneath. If you notice, I'm lifting it and touching it. Lifting it. And if you have your paper towel, take a little piece and do this because that will pick up the excess glue. Glue dries clear, but it still has. But since I know this is going to go, I'm going to put all of my glue down here. Hmm. It doesn't take a lot of glue. A lot of times when you're doing a collage, you will also, you can also coat it with a varnish or a spray sealer when you're done to give it a very professional look. So far, so good. We've got a lot of space here though. Hmm. Ooh, butterfly. I think I'm gonna take and cut a little piece here. There we go. Let's see if I can. Put this so we could, don't lose the clouds. There we go, see I'm getting rid of all of that negative space. Keep my finger here so I don't lose the spot. And I'm going to fast glue this, which means completely. Whites and darks, whites and darks. It's easier with this because we've got, I'm going in and starting to do this. So this, I'm not gonna glue that down yet in case I put something in here. Hmm, what else could be strange? Let's put a cat in a tree. Cute little kitty. Now this one I know, I'm not gonna put it underneath. Use your paintbrush and use a paintbrush, stiff paintbrush for your glue. There we go. Balancing. I like all of this, so I think I'm gonna go in here and glue. Glue. The stiff brush will give you a, I guess, straighter gluing. Especially when you have little pieces like this. Let's see if I can lift this up to show you. When you have it, you can put your finger on it and just swipe it across. And it's easy once you have your entire collage done to go back and do these gluings. All right, I guess my little fellow over here needs to be glued. Again, put your finger on it, move your glue, use your towel. The thinner the pieces, the more you have to be careful not to over glue. And another advantage of the stiff brush is you can lift. All right, let's get her wing down. I think there's some things. Oh, I found, this was a frog, and then there was a little boy, if I could pick it up. And so I glued the little boy and the frog. I think he should be jumping through the sky. Let's put it down before I glue. Always double check before you glue. Since he is going to remain there, I'm going to make sure I have the glue on the edges. And <laughs> remember whimsical, fun, dreamlike. This is leg down. Oh, this one needs a bunch of glue underneath. Again, another advantage of a 
firm brush is that you can get under there without actually moving it too much. And let's get his leg. Push it. I'm going to go back with my towel. Get the edges. Ooh, this is coming together beautifully. All right, my little wing. My little flowers. Plants. So it still needs a couple of things. We still have it really open here. Oh, let's put a treasure chest. What child doesn't want to dream about finding treasure? All right, under here. The reason you use this also is it doesn't get on your finger. So I have a treasure chest. This can be completely glued on the edges. Yes. See how that breaks that up and makes all of this a unit instead of just free floating? Time to get my clouds and sheep. Call them counting sheep down. Everything starts to come together beautifully. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know what else. Hmm. There's got to be something else. Maybe. Let's do this. I'll cut a little bit out in front of you right now. And I'm going to use my big scissors. I'm going to put the growth over here to sort of connect these two. There's a bird. I thought that would be good, but I don't need it. And what's even better is there's a moon behind it. There are a lot of moons in this. And remember, when you're cutting, move the paper, not your scissors. Your scissors just open and close. I know I repeat myself, but we learn that way. Cut that out of the way. Let's see if this works. If it does, we've just completed a beautiful collage with a spectacular theme of a child's dream. Let's see if I can keep this moon in there. See how there's just that line? And trim that. Let's see where we can fit this in. All right, not there. And again, Miss Linda did what I told you not to do, but I can lift this up a little bit still. There we go. See that big open space is going to be closed up now. That's all I needed. I'll just glue this all up. You don't need to chunky glue anything. I did lose my moon, but that's all right. Let's slide it in there. Move it down. There, that empty space is now filled with one simple piece. Part of me wants to go through here and find maybe two or three. I loved this cricket. I thought, I mean, what better thing than a cricket playing music? But there wasn't enough room and there was too much white space for it. So as you're doing this and you're picking your things out, you're going to want to lay it down. I can see where I need some glue here. Lay it down, look at it, spot glue it, and when you're completely happy with everything, you're going to go back and take the time to carefully glue all these little points down. Uh, I got a little glue there. That's why we have this. A little bit of glue goes a long way. I say that constantly, and I truly mean it. I will finish gluing this later, but so far, I believe, whoops, a little schmutzy there that we have accomplished our goal of creating strictly black and white because of a wonderful book a beautiful collage of a child's dream thanks for joining me today go to artwithmisslinda.com for more classes